Welcome back to another episode of Psychosmos. Today we are going to finally give you people what you so rightfully deserve. We are going to get into some of the more advanced secrets of the sacred secretion. Not just the sacred secretion itself, but all the metaphysical aspects that go inside with it. Stay tuned for more. Dun, 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 dun. Um, okay. Um. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, I am joined here today with our beautiful friend Richard. We just did a basic uh, kind of introductory spiel on the sacred secretion. Right now, what we're going to do is finally get into some of the heavier things. Um, I think that the best place to start when we talk about this is we're, we're really talking about what is the sacred secretion, why does it occur, um, what are the better things to do during the process. I don't want to be around the bush. I want to get directly to the point. Um, and so with, when, on the topic of getting directly to the point without getting flustered or anything, we're just going to pretend like you guys aren't even here. Uh, Rich and I are just going to talk bluntly because I feel as though it's just going to be the easiest way to hammer out through a ton of these different, uh, topics. So this is going to be a little more off the cuff. Yeah. You're kind of going to kind of, we're going to curse kinda, a lot. Probably kind of going to get to see behind the scenes yeah. about the way Matt and I will bounce these ideas off with each other because mm -hmm. we like to think so, mm -hmm. but in case it's not apparent in how we talk about this, we spend a lot of time talking about this, going through these ideas, fleshing them out, really feeling comfortable with how we articulate them and just in general how we talk and how we understand them because if you have ideas like this, you got to talk to your friends about them. You got to talk to people about them, people that might not even like you, because mm -hmm. it's really important that you feel comfortable talking about these things. You can, you can always tell when somebody talks about things in their spare time or does stuff in their spare time, you know, like hobbies or whatever, and then when you see them doing it, like, it's different. you know, like, uh, you know, you've all seen those, the, the videos of like these, like, you know, richer, more like, you know, elite type people and they try to do something like the everyman and they like, they have like a video where they're like barbecuing and you can just look at them and you see like this brand spanking new starched apron with the still creases where it was folded, the the pristine Ugh. cleaning implements, them standing there very, very stiff looking at the camera, all right, all right, barbecue all the time. No, you fucking don't. Yeah, you it's don't. so yeah, obvious. Yeah. And the only way you, that you can really counteract that and for people not to see through that is for you to actually do the things there's there's a certain level of comfortability when you do things a lot that you just can't not can't fake but it's really difficult to fake and i'm sure you all know what the fuck i'm talking about yeah. you know like when celebrities go out and they say you know stupid nonsense things about the problems of the world like, and that's one of the things that we do here at psychosmos we get off on really crazy heretical tangents um related to the topic at hand but also like we 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 don't oftentimes when we're talking we get sucked into the energetic vibrations of the of the conversation and then it just takes us all over the place so we that's really, what this we is really gonna excited. be okay we get yeah. really excited about this stuff because it's fucking cool and because we're kind of wired on this stuff because we live breathe eat this stuff yeah and esotericism for some time esotericisms are just are just our bread and butter and so what we're gonna do as i was saying as i was mentioning now that we're three minutes in we're just gonna pretend like you guys aren't here um and we're just gonna talk about stuff okay so i actually have our book here with us psychosmos a synthesis on human history and spirituality the book is broken up into 72 chapters and basically the way that we choreographed this was the first part is on uh, the volume one, which was the father, L. The second volume is the son, Ra. And the third volume is Isis, the Holy Spirit. Um, and that is, of course, supposed to be is Ra L backwards. Um, and the whole purpose for that, again, has to deal with like the hermetic laws of correspondence, reflections, inversions, and such, which we're going to get into. But basically what we've done is we, we take in this book the, the first, um, you know, First, what we do with this book is we take all of pre-human history, all of the ways in which uh, most of the major cultures of the world align with the topic of the sacred secretion and all the archetypes surrounding it. Then we kind of put it into more perspective of Jesus Christ in the last 2,000 years, and then finally by the end of it we talk about the modern era, and that's in the Holy Spirit, which is uh, the, the mother. Now, why did we do it that way? Because life is essentially a trinity of sorts. Um, the trinity is found in so many different... Uh, cosmos it's in so many different mythologies so many different spheres of influence the trinity itself is found within the brain 
the Trinity is the pineal gland being the Father and then the Son and the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit, of course, being the Mother. That is very crucial. We're going to get into why that is the Mother in a second here. But the Mother, the Son, and the Father. These are the triplicities. Every The Son is also analogous with the Daughter. So if you're a woman, you, you could take on that approach as well. But it's basically these three uh, triplicities okay if you want to add the fourth one being the daughter you could do also do that as well the four implies five three and four three right. implies four implies five Very so important. so everything that's not duality of a, of zero and ones zero being the feminine the hidden one being the pillar the masculine the more dominant the prevalent though that that form of duality just from zero becoming a one and being something implies two, implies three, implies four, implies five, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because even if you start with the duality, right? If you have you have nothing and you have one, you have zero and you have one. It, it's not obvious because you think, oh, there's only two things there. There's just a zero and a one. Well, yes, but there is a hidden third because there's always a hidden part. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the hidden, the occult part, if you will, is the fact that the state of becoming, or a better way to think of it is the relationship between zero and one is the third thing mm -hmm. so you can't just have zero and one there has to be there's an implied underlying mm -hmm. relationship between the two and it sort of just goes on and on like that forever or yep. a better way to think about it i think the best way to think about it is the most easily recognizable duality is is, is poles like a magnet like literally a magnet north and south just having a north and south pole implies a point in the middle the balancing point mm -hmm. a point where the, it is neither north nor south completely yep and that exists in every single duality so so what rich just said is the analogy between the father and the son the father would be the north pole the son would be the south pole it's a direct line and what segregates those two the unseen the one that's taking care of the son and ta and taking care of the father is the mother that's the holy spirit that's in the, uh, that's that's essentially the central point well, and in the case of the trinity sorry mm -hmm. but the case, in the case of the trinity the hidden implied fourth part is basically us right this. right and 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 the earth the earth is essentially like the daughter of this uh quadruple uh byproduct of of creation but basically what we're getting at is this in the brain there's a trinity it's the pineal gland as one and the pituitary glands as two glands the the one that is responsible for more of the sacred secretion aspect is linked to the the mother it's the one in the back side it's the hidden one that's the one that releases the soma and then the one on the front controls the endocrine system which rules everything below the body now when i'm going to go forward in this video we're going to bring up a lot of advanced topics we're going to be covering different forms of religions different forms of mythologies uh whether they're modern or their uh their past uh we're going to be talking very heavily about Judeo-Christian faiths. Um, so in the Jewish aspect, we'll be talking about Kabbalah quite a lot. We'll be talking about the Zohar. And then in the uh, the Christian aspects, we'll be talking about the Bible. Um, and then, of course, there are a lot of things that parallel this with Islam. We'll bring a, a little bit of that into there as well. Um, but mainly, we're going to be sticking with uh, the things that most people know. Or even, again, if you don't know a lot of this stuff, highly recommend you check out some of our other videos first before we get into this, um, just because this is going to be pretty advanced. Okay, so on the cover of our book, if you look at it, we have a ton of different things on here. Mainly, we have taken the seven chakra systems of the Hindus, and we've out we've, we've put that overlaid in on the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is the... Uh, the the Jewish uh, pathway to God, if you will, it's a it's a collection of eleven sefiroth. Generally speaking, it's ten or eleven. If you follow the the more advanced wisdoms, you'll find of the eleventh uh, sefiroth of Daat. But anyway, what we're really getting at is the Trinity at the top of the Kabbalah. Uh, at the at the very top. Um, there you have these three aspects again father son holy spirit um, and those are hokma uh, uh, bina hokma and um, kether so why am i bringing all this up well because the the kabbalah maps directly over the human body and uh, bina and hokma which are the son and the holy spirit the mother they line on the same line as the pituitary gland the pineal gland of course which is related to the crown chakra is in line with kether so even in the kabbalah we're talking about the same form of system here um, the reason i like the kabbalah is because whether people know who, or study the kabbalah the sacred secretion is actually the ultimate penultimate wisdom of the of the uh, the the kabbalah itself uh, in the zohar it states that the kabbalah 
Allah, the whole purpose of it, the pathway to God is to fulfill the mashak. The mashak means the oil or the anointing, which is where we get the word mashiach, the Hebrew word for the Savior, Jesus Christ, which is the King of the Jews. Um, and that is essentially one of the big key wisdoms that is missing from a lot of the, the Jewish faiths of today. This is where we get the faith of Sabadian Frankism, which uh, again, I will just will lightly touch on that. The Sabadian Frankists are penultimately the people who have uh, been personally responsible like the, basically they are fiscally number one responsible uh, primarily responsible for the uh, destruction or the hiddenness of this wisdom for the last four or five hundred years or so um, it propped up in the 1600s it was a form of uh, extremism it's not really even that Jewish um, but a lot of people who were considered Jews converted to it which is why th that this is even being brought up in the first place um, but this is why there are a lot of hidden mysteries behind uh, the Zohar, the Talmud, and the Torah, and the Kabbalah itself. Uh, this is, I, I personally believe, one of the bigger keys that are missing. There are a lot of different things about Kabbalah that people don't know. For example, um, uh, Malkuth and uh, Yisad, which it, Malkuth is generally considered the moon, and Yisad is generally considered the earth. Well, they're interchangeable. Uh, they're actually interchangeable because the moon has a full and a new moon cycle. So Tiferet, which is above Yisad, is the sun, and depending on where you know the the lunar phase is, uh, it can actually make a hell of a lot of difference. Why is this important? Because when the moon takes place of Malkuth, that is how the secrets of the sacred secretion become unlocked for uh, you know the the people of um, anybody looking to study sacred secretion even more. Um, effectively. A lot of people who study Lurianic Kabbalah, which is generally considered to be associated with Sabadians, but does not have to be, that is where you get into the deeper complexities of uh, the secrets behind Kabbalah. One of them, one of the, one of those secrets, for example, is um, the law uh, again of correspondence, the Hermetic law of correspondence or inversions, as they call it, which you can actually see in the hidden. Uh, aspects of the the Lurianic Kabbalah, like the shining mirror. So the shining mirror it takes place of Malkuth. Malkuth is the reflection of Kether. So the moon is ultimately what controls the sacred secretion process in the body. Uh, and this is also why the moon is oftentimes linked with the genital region, because if you again if you take the Kabbalah, you can map it right over the human body. Jesus walked the middle path. So we're talking about the middle path um, in Kundalini. This is called the Shashumna um, versus the Ida and Pingala. We want that middle path. So when people follow the Kabbalah, there's an, often a lightning path or a serpentary path. This serpent path, the lightning path, we're going to get into that later as well. This proves in Kabbalah the theory that the sacred secretion is all about the, the, the fall of the lightning, the Kadu-Zeus, the fall of Zeus, the fall of the, the demiurgical uh, aspect of energy into the human body, which we then raise through the processes of, of you know activating the sacred secretion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you go off of the Kabbalistic interpretation, you'll find laws of inversion such as the laws of how the face is matched to the genital region. If you take a face and you flip it upside down, uh, a face can be either ma male or female, but it has all of these parts. Um, especially for a male, they'll have a beard. Uh, even women oftentimes can sometimes grow facial hair, but that facial hair takes place of the genital hair. The mouth is an inverted va uh, vagina, the nose is an inverted penis, and then the eyes are inverted testicles or ovaries. It's just flipped up upside down and the reason it's in the head as a completed form is because the head is considered the godliest part of the body that is the kether that is where all of the source came from so it's androgynous it does not have uh, uh, one genital or the other un unlike how it fell and then it's basically split into duality where the rest of the body we either have like the male's body with the penis or the female's body with the breasts that's just how they come out of of the the mother at birth right and of course there's the mother we all come from from the mother, the mother is extremely crucial and important. So what am I really getting at here? I'm talking about how the sacred secretion applies to all faiths and all forms of uh, ultimate esoteric wisdoms, no matter how deep you go, including the Jewish faith, including the Christian faith. The Christian faith, it's all about the Christ seed. It's all about the Christ oil. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, comes down from heaven. He he has to battle all his demons. He goes up the, the Jordan River. He travels all over the place. He's going all over the body, and then he's ultimately sacrificed, and he raises again three days later. This is all running completely in parallel with the sacred secretion process. Jesus is also Krishna, which is also Neja, which is also Odin and Balder from Norse mythology, which is also Horus and Ra of Egyptian mythology. Most of these main 
figures who are the big heroes. They're all living in the heart chakra. They're all in the heart. They're walking the central path. The, the, the hero's not ever super, super smart or super, super courageous or just those two things. The, the intelligence is linked to the brain. The courageousness is linked to the genitals. No, he, the, the good guy has a good heart. And that's where it all starts from is the center point. That is the holy mother. That is the missing link. This is, the, this is God's wife, Ashira, from the Bible. This holy mother aspect is so crucial. This is why the Catholic Church, the universal church, worships the holy mother they worship mother mary over jesus christ because it's all if you go to the the, the tertiaries the, the franciscans or whatever again franks france uh, uh, sabatain francus like they're all connected here um the 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 tertiaries uh, uh the franciscan tertiaries they, they they're they're like gnostics and they don't even know that they're gnostics um they they talk about a lot of these things it's all about aspects of love love is kesed love in the kabbalah Kesed is Jupiter is the Jupiterian aspect that leads directly into Bina, which is the Saturnian aspect, and this bridge of the lower seven, the, the seven of the worlds of Yetzira and Asiya, connect to the the higher worlds of uh, Berea and Atziluth through the the invisible aspect of Da'at, which is that eleventh Sephiroth. But Kesed is the key. In, in order to go up the the lightning path, the spiral path, the the snake path, the serpentine path, you go from Kesed to Bina. Kesed going into Bina um, or, is is essentially love. Love is the key. Love is that right brain element just the way the same way that the sun rises to the right in the east and sets in the west that right brain element of love is the ultimate key to unlocking enlightenment and you have to love yourself so a lot of religions will talk about dissension before ascension you're descending inward you're not descending in your activities or your actions because we are made in the image of god so this world is an inversion because everything is a reflection of everything else just like i did with the face and the genitals everything in the higher realm is, a, is an inversion and a reflection of the lower realms here so uh for example the seven we have all the seven main Major planets in the seven chakra systems, but there's also really uh, there's really 13 aspects of, of our major Oort cloud cl solar cluster, which is basically the 13 aspects are the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Ma uh, the Earth, the Moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, and then the two asteroid belts. The asteroid belt that's on the outskirts uh, between uh, Mars and Jupiter, and then there's the asteroid belt that's on the outside of Pluto. That creates like a, a cell wall. That's basically like our, our as above, so below version of a cell. And all the different planets are like the different parts of a cell that work in tandem with each other so that the cell can survive and exist. So what, and, and we as a human being have a cell wall. It's called our skin. And we also are made of the major five elements which we see in the pentagram. Those f ma the four regular elements elements being earth, water, air, and fire from top up, and then the fifth element, ether, love, what have you, uh, the, the, if you go again to the wise Kabbalistic sages, the earth element would be our skin, the uh, water element would be cardiovascular, the air would be our musculature, uh, and our lungs, and all that which helps produce DMT, it's that whole, wholly hidden element, and then the fire would be our bones, because that, that's not there when it burns away, and it's also interchangeable, There's, it could probably be completely interchangeable. That fifth element of ether, that is the neurological system. The neurological system is the fifth element that's connected that we don't see. In Gnosticism, uh, Sophia grants humanity a part of divine creation within us that the Demiurge does not have. This Demiurge is the sun aspect of the Holy Trinity. It's the negative version of it. The positive version of it is Jesus Christ because it's he came down in an inverted world. He came down in an inversion. This is also why many people consider females the weaker sex because it's an inversion. The above us though, in space, the woman rules because space is the womb and all of the other planets and stars are more of the masculine aspects that just take precedent in her womb. So everything is an inversion um, when you go from one level to another and everything is just a cycle within a cycle within a cycle within a cycle. The sacred secretion is a cycle within a human body that goes throughout the processes of a cycle of the sun rising and setting or the year going, you know, uh, starting and ending or anything or, or the human body is a cycle of birth and death and then we're able to spirally evolve. Spiritual power and spiral powers, it's all spiral. Everything is spiral in nature. Everything spiraled downward in divine creation. Everything started from the top down, the head of the human body, 
bled the light through a fixed point like and this is why it's considered masculine even though it's androgynous because it's like seed going into a woman the woman being the womb of space so this light was refracted into this 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 body of space and then within the body of space is all of the children and then on all you know all the children create even more life and etc 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 it just keeps spiraling down into different forms well the head is the god aspect that's the brain the head is the god aspect of fire. It trickles down and then separated uh, in the middle would be lungs and then below that would be the earth and water. And that's also in the face. The eyes uh, are fire. They take in light to see. The nose takes in air and the mouth takes in uh, the earth and the watery elements. And then that's also in the body and it's also on the planet itself. It's also in a tree. It's in... Um, uh, in DNA, DNA spiral structure, the central strand is hydrogen bonds, and then it's separated by the carbon and the nitrogen, which is the fire and the earth and water kind of aspects, respectively. But either way, all of, all of what I'm saying is that there are set patterns. In fact, most of what I just said was a lot of dark magic, in fact. So a lot of the, the basic patterns of which I used to describe, saying something like there are 12 cranial nerves in the brain, that's a form of dark magic. Why? Because I'm pointing out the creation of a creator. The, the, I'm pointing out the, the physical aspects of a creator rather than the metaphysical aspects of a creator. So it's by saying things like, oh, look at all these patterns, look at all these things, this is how our human collective consciousness formed mythologies and religions and all these books that are full and riddled with all these crazy different schematas and mechanics. But the whole point of this is to fully point out and flesh out how these processes work in tandem with the greater divine. And this is where most of these wisdoms of today are segregated from the highest of truths. The highest of truths does not just coalesce in patterns. Everything that I just described to you is just patterns. They're just patterns. They're just physical creation. It, everything that is above in the higher spheres, that is something that is so much beyond patterns. It's, 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 it's like... It's very difficult to explain, but basically what I'm getting at is that just in the way that the brain works, where it works at basically the speed of light um, within your own mind, in the way that you're able to have thoughts and everything, that is essentially the, the true power of source. And it's really great where we can kind of formulate and see the proof of creation through these patterns, but it's more the manipulation of the wisdom behind the patterns which causes enlightenment. It's not that one can recognize the patterns. It's that you utilize the patterns for your everyday living to become God yourself. This is why sacred secretion is so crucial to the evolution of man. You are effectively talking about maximizing the potential of every human soul's energy which will only in turn give back to source and will heal the entire universe that is how powerful human beings are everything there's nothing below us everybody believes that there are angels demons what have you um, that are below us spiritually and energetically no our physical bodies give us precedent because we are creations we have physical creations and we can actually do so much in these physical forms because we are creators because we are made literally in an inverted image of god we walk around an inverted world as gods ourselves just like how there is source that is bleeding into this cosmic womb of space but there is still something that is a void which is a, that is potentially reflected outside of source there could be even an inversion in that sense if if god is like a light or if you want to think of it that way god generation oscillation destruction i should be saying lord if the lord is a source of light at the the highest of highs of the pinnacle of truth is there something that is outside of that is there something that is a darkness where the light cannot touch these are the things that a lot of the dark magicians um have thought of all throughout history and it it, it takes uh it takes somebody who is pure of soul and intention to start to really uncover the the deeper truths of why our bodies do this so so that is basically like the introductionary tangent i just i dropped a whole bunch of the darker magics 
of seeing this is why it says stuff like witchcraft is bad in the holy bible for example uh because basically you can get really sucked into just looking at patterns and saying oh wow zodiatry and and the zodiac and all that stuff these are forms of traps these are traps that are purposely put there to to uh uh make it so that you don't fully awaken um if you if you are the type of person who live who does not live in accordance with understanding at the very least what the planets do and how they can influence you then you are basically living a slave and this is why there are so many different religions who that talk about slavery because it's not just a form of physical slavery we're talking about a metaphysical form of slavery most of the things that are written in in uh the these books of wisdoms and truth are actually written in forms of of uh, metaphor there's not supposed to be taken literally it's figuratively so you can become a slave if you want to you just you you won't be fully awakened to what's actually going on in in the world or what is go- even going on within your own body you're you will be a slave to your own body why am i hornier at this point of the year than others it's because you're a slave to your own body why is it that i can't you know lose weight i can't do this diet it's because you're a slave that like there's really no other way to get around it it's kind of harsh but that's the ultimate truth is that there are ways in which you can active proactively work in the world of action to not be a slave but people want people people want to be a slave they choose to be a slave and then they and, and a lot of the time it's their ego ego is like that big thing that everybody has to kill and destroy um, because you don't get to take that part with you it ultimately dies anyway um, so a lot of people will, will say things in the comments like um, you know uh, a lot of the stuff that we're teaching isn't exactly in line with what they've learned and that's okay because we have looked at a whole ton of stuff and we've done a lot of experimenting and we are just trying to find the penultimate truths so we've done a lot more testing I think than most people I think that kind of goes in line with how we speak and how we communicate we're not even 30 people we're not 30 years old and we ha- are discovering all these things not that our age matters it's the age of our souls really um, but the reason I bring that up is because uh, we we it's not like we have a million years we haven't been here for very long but we are learning from tons of other people who have been here much longer than us and we're just combining all of these uh thought processes and we're we're talking about it as rich said to discover the ultimate truths so that was like my 25 minute spiel i think um uh just this is just leading up to sacred secretion um you know i haven't even really gotten into some of the 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 deeper stuff but yeah what what, what do you think your mind is very mercurial. Is so it? Well, both of ours are, yeah. for that matter. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, very well said. So on that topic, yeah, I just said a whole bunch of crazy random shit all at once, but um, let's get into it. Okay, sacred secretion. What is it about? It's about sacrifice. It's about peace. So one of the big things of sacred secretion is, again, we're talking about the poles. We're talking about the duality of energy flowing from... The top of the head down to the base of the spine and then up again. This is essentially the secret of creation. Okay, so if you take the Bible, you take the Big Bang Theory, basically um, it was all one entity and then it disseminated itself. It it bled down. That's like the head bleeding down through the neck into the physical creation of the body. Um, And then uh, basically where we are is either somewhere around the heart. People have said we're at the heart. That's why we're called the planet Earth. Or maybe we're at like the genital region of the body. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. This This is the point. This is what's most important the the middle path okay this is why this the christ seed is said to ha- be created like in the center of the body it's it's said to be created at the solar plexus on the straight and narrow on the straight and narrow um so that solar plexal area which is guarded by virgo the the she's the harvester of the wheat jesus is born in Bre- bethlehem the house of bread the 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 virgo is associated with not only mercury but it's also associated with chiron chiron's the asteroid belt belt as in it goes around the waist just like mother mary and mary magdalene have their sashes and their girdles all and and then the freemasons they have their white aprons all of these girdles orion's belt all these belt this is super crucial because this is an aspect of how to culminate your own humanity these chemicals these substances this christ seed it's a sacrificed part of the body it's the sacrificed planet you know they they say that there were thirty thousand years ago that's how old the asteroid belt between mars and jupiter is not that old guys not that old and they say that mars and jupiter somehow um you know either cain slayed abel or marduk or in tiamat or whatever whatever the entire situation happened there was a planet there and ultimately it got destroyed well that that i think caused an impact on us as 
as human beings to some degree. And I think that also, uh, it's this aspect of destruction which is necessary and pertinent to our human evolution. So Virgo being the solar plexial area where this Christ seed is, is generally born, it's the only feminine um, zodiacal sign. Again, we see that hidden aspect of the mother is hidden there. She's the creator. We all come from the mother. We all come from our mothers. Um, the mother's divine essence, the holy mother, the highest mother, her divine essence is the neurological system, the tree. It's just like life because women are like life in the body. The placenta that comes out attached to the baby looks like a tree, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The spleen, if you cut it in half, looks like a tree with little follicles on it and everything. And the spleen is considered the manger. Now, if you don't have a spleen, it doesn't matter because the liver is going to take over. The pancreas is going to take over. Other organs of the body will take over. It's amazing how the body works. Um, it doesn't matter because it's more of a metaphysical journey, okay? If you're taking care of yourself and you're trying to raise all these substances as best as you can ultimately it's not going to matter if you don't have an organ or whatever um but there's a lot of things that you do need to do during the sacred secretion process so that you can maximize its potential um and mainly the thing is that um it's all about walking that middle path um for the majority of your life uh, throughout most of the times of each lunar cycle, but then basically you want to have periods in which you uh, raise your vibrational energies to the highest degree. That is your sacred secretion time. Now, as we've discussed before, that is when the moon goes into your sun sign, so you should already know what that means. I'm not going to get too uh, heavy on the specifics of that, but when the moon enters your sun sign, uh, I do it for about a week. So basically the way that I live my life is I mainly live in the heart chakra, okay? You got to live from the center. You have to pull in other people's energies and then and then give it back to them, recycled, refurbished through through your energetic process. People want to live in the brain. That's not how you manifest. People want to be hypersexualized, and that's not how you manifest either. Um, it, the idea is that what Matt always gets that, and I've seen him get misinterpreted and everything, is that when he talks about – raising or lowering your vibrations i see a lot of people they only view it episodically so they only view it as in that moment so he's either saying raise it or lower it and they don't separate it right right so what what we're getting at is equilibrium is not a state balance is not a state it is a fluctuation it is it is a act it, equilibrium is not a state of balance it is a balancing act it is action you constantly have to move between the higher and the lower realms. That's right. That's our blessing and our curse as humanity. We are in between. We are the mediator, the path from the lower realm to the higher realm. Not to mention the other thing too is it depends on what t your timing is. As Rich said, it's all about balance. People, people want to live in this world where they think that they can just stay one, one track mind, one point, one diet, it doesn't work that way. You need to have experience. I'm sorry. I apologize yeah. for people that pisses that off, but if it pisses you off, but you but need you're to. You're right. Have... There's there's this idea that yeah. if you there's this idea that you need to go find a thing that is the, the good thing out there that is plus five, and the negative thing that you need though that is minus five. Right. And if you have those two things together, you get to zero. It cancels out, and you're at a state of balance. And once you find those two things, so you, I just need to find one good spiritual practice and one good material thing that sort of keeps me tethered and balanced and then those things will meet settle the difference and bam bing bang boom that's my number that's my state of being and then what matt's getting at is no that's nope. not how it works you nope. constantly have to move back and forth because that's life life mm -hmm. is always a cycle there's never a point where the trough and the crest completely cancels out and it's just an even straight line a flat line because nothing would happen Without yep. motion, without the constant battle, or better way to think about it would be the balancing act, without that constant attempt of all of existence to get back into a state of balance, there would be nothing. The state of the universe and of our consciousness, of everything, trying to get back to a point of balance, constantly pulling each other up and down. It is the two forces trying to extend themselves to their furthest end and being pulled back into the center. That's what creates the balance. And the mm -hmm. thing that pulls it back into the center in our realm here for us is us, humanity, consciousness, love. the sacred secretion, love, God. That is what brings us into balance. And that is what it will ultimately, hopefully, 
bring us back home to the source. Exactly. And that's the, that's the ultimate goal, right? Everybody always talks about going to heaven or nirvana. Um, it's, it's the ultimate end goal result. Well, how do we do that? Well, it's basically going from the, the middle and lower chakras to the middle and higher chakras and keeping this perpetual motion of an infinity in your body. So this is one thing that really assists me in my whole entire life, my form of manifestation that I will share with you guys. It's basically, you know, everything has to start from the heart. The heart is the present to be. The past and the future do not exist. They never existed. It's always been you. It's always been you in the present moment making every single decision that you possibly could. And when other people are giving you energy or they're throwing their energy out there, there's nothing wrong with tapping into yourself and using other people's energy to heal the world, okay? And this is actually what has leads other people to success. This is what leads a ton of other people into the the higher realms of, of becoming that messiatic figure, the anointed figure. This is how you can maximize your potential. Other people need to know about the sacred secretion. Other people need to be talked to about it so that they can maximize their potential as well. People want to do, they want to live their lives, okay? And that's that's exactly how you're supposed to live but it's it's the, having the wisdom that secret 11th sephiroth of da'at that is the the penultimate uh expression of how you use love in its intelligent form to gain wisdom and understanding so that you can become enlightened okay a great a great real real world example is actually there is a book it's a fantastic book we both read it's, it's by dale carnegie and it's uh, how to influence how to win, win friends, friends and influence, influence people. people yeah and which the, a lot of people are very hard on dale yes carnegie it for. has a very negative reputation yeah. because to be to be blunt, it's because they read the second half of the title and that's all they read. And they go, how to influence people. Only evil people do that. Okay. The TikTokers and YouTube people are called influencers people. And they wear that as a badge of honor. Mm. So obviously the word influence isn't the problem. But the point that I'm getting at is in that book, he specifically says the way that you succeed in life and in business, because that's kind of his angle, is he prescribes having a genuine interest in people, remembering things about their life, bringing it up in conversation, being interested in them. And the reason that that gets a bad rap is because people see him telling people to do that and their interpretation of that is basically taking advantage of people. Right. Not remembering um, someone's daughter's birthday or their you know their favorite uh, play or book or whatever or remembering to do something out of your way for a person or going above an extra uh, going above and beyond the extra mile to help out like a coworker or something like that he says to do those things but because he's coming at it from a slightly more businessly minded approach and there's he repeatedly says this is how you get what you want they immediately write it off as evil when in reality, he specifically says again and again and again and again, the best way for this system, my system that I'm telling you to work, is to have a genuine interest. He specifically stresses that again and again. So when you see people who mischaracterize that book and they say things like, he's teaching you how to take advantage of people, how to extort them, how to play them like chumps, how to like fake being nice and stuff like that to get what you want, just know that they're full of bullshit and they haven't read the book because Carnegie specifically says, you have to take a genuine interest. It has to be genuine. You have to actually care. You actually have to give a shit. You actually have to remember things about people. Yeah. And that that is a great material, basic, day-to-day -day version of this same principle. Is that you have to actually try to be genuine and to actually try to connect with people. And it, go, it goes thing. into what you were saying the other day about be just believing yeah. You know, and lie the word lies in belief, you know. And and on the topic of Dale Carnegie real quick before I pass it back to you, it's a lot of people also give Carnegie a hard time for that book because they say he's too nice. Um, and that he's too giving and then he cares too much. And you know, really what it comes down to is the guy wrote the book, I don't know, I think it was the forties or fifties, and um, it was a different time, it was a different period. But I if you really read the works and you understand what he's saying, he's basically saying try really hard, but also don't give a crap if like just don't give a shit if, if things don't go your way or, or you cannot lose energy when you've already lost things in the physical world. Opportunities, people, you can't, you can't, um, the reason you feel like shit because of it is because you're giving too much energy away. And, and you're not, and there's nothing wrong with taking, not, yeah. not taking in the traditional sense of the word, right. but 
receiving. Well, because yeah, that's re- receiving. He, absolutely. He, and that's a feminine aspect of yes. love that, that most people, male or female, never master. A lot of girls want too much love or, or not enough, and the same goes for men. A lot of the men are oblivious, and they don't even realize what there, they're doing. There's nothing wrong regard, with trying but... to get to trying to get yourself into a state of being receptive or to try to get other people to help give you what you think you deserve. Inherently, right. and that's the that's a big problem that we have today. Right. Where the any time, unless you're talking about having a mental health day or something like that, any time you talk about, really try to talk about, you know, getting something from other people or getting what you want, it's it's always very funny when and how it's good and when it's bad. You know what I mean? Because people will say like, you know, take some me time. You need to you need to have some self care. You know, take out care of yourself. That's fine. But when a business guy talks about being genuinely nice to other people so that it improves your business and you make more money, that is, like, evil. Mm. That is, like, anathema to a functioning moral society to these people. And that comes and down to the biases and the non-understanding yep. of, uh, j- of just being, how, the way that the laws of nature work and that there are things that – Again, this is an inverted world. Some things seem bad, but they're actually good, and vice versa. Some people want to coddle their children when, re- in reality, that's the one of the worst things you can do for them. You want to, you think you're protecting them, but you're protecting them from shit. You're protecting them from you, which is nothing because you obviously didn't get enough experience yourself, or maybe you got too much experience and it was bad because you didn't know how to manipulate your own energies. This is really what we're getting at. You want to, do you want to live a miserable life? Yes or no. Yes, you do. Okay, then be like everybody else. Live in the lower chakras. Be a slave to all the energies that go around you. Uh, you know, have your sex whenever you want it. Eat your food whenever you want it. Don't don't live by any form of discipline. Don't listen to your body. Oh, I really shouldn't have this, but I want it. You know, don't listen to your body. You know, don't do that. Just live completely in chaos. And then when you don't get the things that you want in life, you know, then then whatever you're screwed and then you end up just i don't know living a, another life like anybody else really what we're not trying we're not trying to come off and seem as though we have this penultimate wisdom that is going to absolutely change everybody's life but what i will say is the hundreds of people that we have told all of this information to has helped hundreds of people's lives i would also point out just look at some of our uh uh, detractors our critics yeah. if you will because what well, like we have said, three major forms of critics they they fall under basically three branches of judeo-christian extremists um well that's one uh astute vegans would be another one and then i would say just people who fall way too in line with the online cultures of you know uh oh well if you're into semen retention then you are also an incel but i i mean i have a girlfriend and we all have plenty of dates and stuff so the the thing that always stands out to me is that if you notice what people's criticisms are, it's very strange that they all they all take personal offense to an attack that was never made by us, yeah, and that one that they formulated because of things that we say with confidence, no matter how many times we have disclaimers that right. we're not unique. This isn't a special wisdom. This mm-hmm. isn't unique to any one faith. We're not. The be all end all authority, blah blah blah. It doesn't matter to these people. And what's really funny is that it just separate our personal spiritual interpretations of stuff, just for a moment, if you will, from from what we say, because it's really funny to me that people seem to take issue with us recommending uh, non not don't engage in sexual degeneracy, mm-hmm. be mindful of what you eat and drink. Mm-hmm. Try to engage in some good spiritual practices that make you feel good Mm -hmm. and be in a generally speaking, quote unquote, higher vibrational state of being. So just literally be good and put good vibrations out there. And for it it baffles me that people can hear that and they're like, there's something in there I can take offense to. God damn it. There's something in there. I just I just got to find what it is. And it's like, I don't know what they're talking about, because I promise you, you don't have to agree with everything we say. But the fact that people still sit there and they're like, no, 
No, Medi meditating, not drinking alcohol, not fucking anything that moves. There is no way that would make my life better. Zero. No fucking way. I, no, I'm done. I'm refusing. I'm, yep. I'm clicking off this video. Yep, yep. And it's just like, you don't have to agree with this. Like I said, but like, you really think that if you just did that stuff, just like a little bit, it wouldn't help you. It wouldn't improve your situation at all. Right. Really? And this, and this is where we can actually get into the uh, discrepancies of what we see in our comments and what we really truly think and feel. Um, and I can get started with, with a number of those actually, cause this, cause what Rich is saying is absolutely true. We bring so much wisdom. It's like you, you guys also have to recognize that we have studied a lot of stuff for a very long time. And it, of course everybody has, a lot of people have been getting involved in this, but I will, I will go out on a limb and say this with, with severe certainty. I don't believe other people have done as much effort or put in as much effort as we have in regards to a lot of this because we have gone out into the fields brought this wisdom to hundreds of people in our local community and have gotten feedback we're and we're doing this with like no with very limited funds so this is being done you know with a whole wide variety of people i mean you can go and look at our podcast list and see how many people we work with and have had conversations with and just ga gauging experiences this is ultimately what it comes down to balance as we've been saying this whole video balance is the key balance is understanding that there is a process or there is a time period in which you have to be very high vibes and you have to take ultimate care of yourself but there also is a, equally a time period could chalk it up to a couple days or however many days, it doesn't matter, where you have to lower your vibrations. God, or the divine Lord, or the, the supreme creator of all things, source. Source, Big Bang Theory, all of that was a response to wanting to lower vibrations in a giant time frame. That is a cycle that is beyond our understanding of of even measuring time you want to go by the 14 billion year old universe theory then that's how long ago that happened very long time ago so we're still in the midst of god literally just trying to chill so he was it was so active that when it finally lowered its vibration it created something you wouldn't even be able to have a thought if God decided that he didn't want to smoke a J for whatever the cosmic, I'm, it's super offensive, but I don't give a shit. It's the cosmic parallel to whatever he's doing to lower its own vibrationatory signature to a point where things can become created. Okay. The reason that we're so key on the vibration thing, just like by the way, by the way, is because one, the entire universe is built on motion. Right. There's no motion. There's no life. There's no nothing. There's no existence. Done. Period. And the other point is that, um, aside from the fact that everything fluctuates like a cycle, so literally it is a frequency, it's up and down. It applies really readily to brain waves and stuff like that. And just on everything a, is energy. Planck scale, quantum physics. Yeah, I was going off, and I was getting, I was gonna get into Planck right there because. Um, Basically, I bet a great way to think about it is that the universe is consciousness. God is consciousness. Without consciousness, none of this exists, including your own. So that's kind of the bedrock of everything, and it kind of exists outside of everything. And so what I think, uh, what I think happened with creation, what Matt is getting at with the lowering of the vibration of God, is basically, if you look at certain studies, like a great document is it's from the um, it's from the U.S. military, CIA. It's called it's a project called the Gateway Assessment, and in this document, he talks a little bit about the theories of, as you brought up, uh, Max Planck. Um, specifically, there's this thing called Planck time. Planck time is the smallest measurable unit of time that we have in this physical universe, right? And to get it, you need something approximating either frequency or mo a motion and oscillation. To calculate a time, you need you need a coordinate in space and you need a coordinate in time. You need both of those things, right? So you need to have some sort of change in a space, right? And that's how you get this time. So in this document, he talks about brainwave patterns and in this process that's described in this specific sort of guided meditation, you could think about it, he theorizes and there's, there's theories 
that there is basically a way to get your brain to this state of moving so fast that not even Planck time, the smallest measurable unit of time, can keep track of you. You, your brain, the oscillation, the frequency is so fast, so great, so powerful that the smallest measurable unit of time that we have in this physical universe is not enough to keep you tethered here. And the idea is that if you can do that, if that happens, you're you are not bound by the by the laws of the universe anymore. It kind of sounds like some wacky comic book stuff like with the Flash where he moves so fast that the universe doesn't have a way of keeping track of him. But that is literally something that is not just theoretically possible, it's actually doable. Mm. And so in my humble opinion, and I think maybe Matt doesn't, uh, I don't know if you conceptualize it the same way as me mm. or in the same words, but I think that's what happened when God descended. I think he did the reverse of that. And I think that is the realm that God is in. So it's not about getting to the highest speed here in the material world. Right. Because that's how you live so far in the high mind that you completely ignore your body and you pull a Greek philosopher and you're looking up at the stars enraptured so much by it that you walk right into a fucking well and you die. Yeah. But you can't live down in the super lowest version of it either because you will come to close to a stop and your life will it'll uh it'll stagnate mm -hmm. and you'll die. Your soul will essentially be ripped apart. So the piece idea by piece. the idea is that first you get to as matt says you live in the heart you get to that first balance point the perfect balance point that is in between the divine and the physical and i think maybe perhaps the next step after that is that by doing so you can sort of eliminate your detachment to the not the not the material side but the lower worst parts of the material side yeah and then your heart your original balance point becomes the new bottom point if you will your head you're properly put on your body head on your shoulders proper existence in the physical world head that is also now your higher mind that becomes your new balance point and perhaps that is how you tap into this source realm which yes. is so much higher than everything that your brain your consciousness your ego your little cool little version of thinkiness on the planet it doesn't exist it can't there's nothing to keep it tracked or tethered here right. and that your brain goes somewhere else and that's what happens in transcendental experiences in intense meditative experiences near-death experiences uh even people who have died and come back or even ex certain experiences with psychedelics i think that's what it's all getting it that is a that is a pathway to the realm of god yep. and that he did something of the reverse to bring himself down in here to create all of us because he loves us so much because we are in part him and to in a sense prove to himself that he could yeah which he didn't have to do because you know we know that he could he knew that he could but you know call it a fun thought experiment that's exactly what it is and everything that you just said is 100 percent right it's all about balance i mean if you if you want to get big at the gym right let's say your whole goal is you want to get buff you want to get jacked like the chad that's probably going to end up being on the thumbnail of this video if you want to get jacked like Chad, you want to get super buff, you have to put in so much dedication, so much time and energy and work into the physical body, but then you also have to put the time in the kitchen and resting. It's not just one thing. If you sit there and you just grind away at the gym and you, and you literally don't stop, you will kill yourself. And that is where I see a lot of vegans. One this punch is, man is bullshit, kids. Yeah, it, well, that's true too. Well, this is where I see a lot of uh, vegans, specific, people who are specifically on very specific diets it's where like oh no you can't do anything it's like listen guys the proof is in the pudding if you're gonna go immediately to the comments right now and start writing a book about how i'm a shitty person maybe you have the dietary problems maybe your energy is so fixated and high up in your fucking brain right now that you're whacked out and anxious and pissed off and your ego is being so stimulated in the amygdala that you believe everything that you're doing is is correct even though you're fucking killing yourself and you will not refuse to believe that because some fucking schwami convinced you look i i really love the guy dr sebi i follow uh as much as in, and as best as i can normally day to day i try to follow a, a somewhat relatively vegetarian diet but i i do eat meat and i eat meat probably more during the holidays i've had more meat recently just because it's been holidays seeing family etc etc and i don't feel guilty not even a little bit i have my own 
ways in which that I go about eating. I try to avoid pork as much as possible. The same with like undercooked fish or really anything. I try not to eat as much red meat these days, especially. But guys, your body cannot be neglected in its entirety. If you want to just be high vibes, you're going to fucking kill yourself because you're going to do nothing but pop the fucking brain that that you have as you fill it with all this fucking energy and you give yourself cancer this is literally how it works it, it you the two biggest killers are heart disease and cancer heart disease is linked to leo which is the sun and cancer is literally named after the moon it's literally named after the 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 the, the sign in which the is ruled by the moon so what what it really means is that the biggest medical killer on the face of the planet regardless of race or culture or where you're located is literally not living in accordance with the fucking sun and the moon that's literally just living in accordance with your maternal and paternal energies your paternal energies are the ones that are supposed to give you those high vibes this is where you're disciplined and you fucking hate it sometimes because maybe you 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 didn't you know orgasm for like a whole month or six weeks or five months or however long and you're really feeling it and you're horny and it fucking sucks and you're sitting there and you really want to eat a cheeseburger maybe i don't know i don't know you but the point i'm getting at is that like that whole sacred secretion time that's you giving back to the father that's where you're just like really disciplined you have to put in that effort you have to go to the gym and and lift the weights and do the hard part but then equally as important Maybe not as equally. I would argue maybe a little less important. But this is only because it's for you. Your body needs those lower vibrational energies. It needs the more maternal. It needs to come back down to earth and say, you know what? No, you have a family you love and you want to be with them. And maybe you want to have a glass of wine. Maybe you want to eat a little steak. You, it, it's not It's not wrong to do those things, but it has to be in accordance with the divine properties, the divine time signatures, when your body is able to do those things. And if you have a period of time where you can party just a little bit, uh, we're not telling you what to do. It's however you want to do it. But you got to come down. This is why it's like, look, I... I eat, I eat meat mainly when the moon is I'm a cancer I am a sun cancer okay when the moon is in cancer when the moon is in Gemini cancer and Leo I am not doing bad things I am straying away from the sex and straying away from the bad food and straying away from all the negative things and I take that with me for the majority of the lunar cycle. It's not just when it's in Gemini, Cancer, and Leo. But, you know, sometimes uh, synchronicities happen. Sometimes people come in, they say, hey, you want a glass of wine? But if I'm during my sacred secretion time, I will say no. Okay? And then I live mostly in accordance with the heart chakra. So I'm living in the head during my sacred secretion. Then I live mostly in the heart chakra. And then there are there's one ma cycle mainly around you know when the moon is in Capricorn, which is opposite of Cancer, which just occurred over Christmas. So what did I do? I drank a little bit of wine. I had a little bit of steak. And none of you, not a single one of you, is ever going to convince me that what by doing that that it's wrong or that i'm going to hell or that we're promoting lies because in reality uh yeah you we shouldn't be eating meat to the degree that we are and we shouldn't be slaughtering animals the way that we are however meat also provides a ton of different supplements that most vegans have to take anyway or else they end up looking like that vegan lady on tiktok and nobody wants to look like that vegan lady on tiktok because she doesn't know what the fuck she's doing because you're you're, you're gonna die there's you're, no you're, you balance there you can't make the sacred secretion properly if your body literally doesn't have nutrients yep and, and i hate to be cheeky here but god god specifically said you shall not be fed on bread alone as Jesus, Jesus said, didn't yep. God say you shall not yep. be fed on bread alone? Bread alone, okay? He didn't say you you don't need bread to be fed. He right. didn't say you only need God. He said you shall not be fed on bread alone, yep. implying you need bread and God. Yep. You need something else. Yep. And and just to also clarify something, um, a lot of the, the people that are upset with the nutrition, specifically the the meat and everything, I I kind of I get where you're coming from. Yes. Don't get me wrong. But I also just want to point something out because there seems to be this this false dichotomy between, and I hate false dichotomies, between the lower and the, the higher and the lower vibrations, okay? There seems to be this opinion that anything that lowers vibrations or that is in the realm of lower vibrations is quote unquote bad, evil. And anything that is in the higher realm of vibrations is quote unquote ben ben mm -hmm. inherently benef beneficent, bene beneficial, beneficial um benefic there we go benefic, benefic going for. Yeah. um or good right and 
it's just not how it works okay right. because it, higher vibrations and lower vibrations fall into the same duality the true duality that we talk about and ying ying and yang are much much better at this i think than a lot of western spirituality and stuff because mm -hmm. here in the west we have this view of high versus low is good versus evil black and white is not two different things hot and cold is not two different things that are inextricably linked they are diametrically opposed at all times trying to destroy one another completely yep that is how we view anything that is close to duality that's how we view it generally speaking in the west and it's a huge huge problem because that is not how real duality works light and dark hot and cold it is not that well, light and dark you need both of them because a lot of the times in the west people will say that oh you need light and dark but what they really mean is basically light is better and good but you can't but you can't have it all the time that's really what they're getting at and it's like no you need darkness sometimes you need to sleep you need darkness for your brain to trigger sleep chemicals just on one level let alone to stay asleep your pineal brand your, your pineal gland is triggered by like it needs a break mm -hmm. amongst a whole bunch of other different aspects of duality like hot and cold mm -hmm. and the the problem in the west is that we tend to view these things as diametrically opposed at all times vying for supremacy mm -hmm. and that's just really not how it works because not only is that usually not what's going on but that's not even the, uh, the relationship of the two things with each other right because they're inextricably inextricably linked it's not that it's not that you need it's not that you can't have hot without cold it's that your brain you can't even have the concept of what heat even is without cold in reference to it right and the the uh i think it's the I Ching. it, get, it gets really into that you you can't have tall without short you can't and people think oh that's right you because like you know there are two things and it's and they they depend on one another and it's like it's deeper than that the mm -hmm. underlying your underlying understanding of what even one of those terms means relies on both of them you literally physically mentally consciously cannot understand that these two things are opposites or complements is a better way to describe it that's why the yin, yin and the yang symbol has a little bit of black in the white and a little bit of white in the black mm -hmm. they're complements to each other there's a little bit of them in the other yeah. and that's what it is there's a relationship between them they complement you need to have both of them and when I say that, I know for a fact I would be willing to bet money that one of you fuckers, no offense, is going to be going down to those comments and telling and saying that I basically just said that evil's fine. No, right. it's not what I'm saying because your stupid little tiny brain dichotomy of what duality is says, oh, good evil. That's no, no, stop. The point is, is that there are things that are low, things that are high. You need both of them. Yeah. You and you can't solely do one the other if you spend all of your time on the higher vibrations looking at the wonders of the stars and understanding the the mysteries of nature like i said you will pull a greek philosopher and you will stumble into a fucking well and you will die yeah and if you're living down here in the lower vibration you're going to end up you're going to end up uh, a subject of hedonism yep. doing drugs and alcohol and fucking like crazy and you're going to end up dead in a gutter from ODing or being killed in some fucking gang war yeah, and it's the that's point that's basically how it works so and just on a, on, on a final note, because I just want to point this out for all the people who are like going to be, you know, oh, man, saying evil is okay. No, what I'm saying is, though, is that there are things in this world that people would readily ascribe to being evil if asked about them. But if you ask them in another way, they wouldn't say that it's totally evil and that you should never, ever, ever, ever do it. Most of these examples, violence. People, most, if you ask people, is violence good or evil they would probably say evil they would probably say bad but then if you were asked okay so then if you're standing there and someone is beating the shit out of your child is is it is it bad to then use violence to mm -hmm. defend your child and most people would say of course not that would be fucking ridiculous right but so then what is it is violence good or evil the intention it's neither it's the intention it's, it is it depends exactly it's entirely dependent on the intention and the circumstance it's the, there's another duality right there yep and over here in the west we have this really annoying tendency where we just do not understand that aspect of duality right so even when we say things like yeah you need light and dark in the back of our mind we're still thinking light good dark bad no no yeah and to go on what you just said 
there's a clear distinction and we're very guilty of this uh, because we don't make this distinction enough there's a distinction between vibrations and frequency vibrations is location of energy in the body it is okay to lower vibrations in the body it is 100 percent okay to do that anybody who tells you that is full of shit what you're doing is raising your frequency permanently the more that you uh, build upon your temple, the more that you do sacred secretion, for example, you're raising your frequency. And the frequency is super crucial because that's really what everybody's trying to get at. Vibrations is just where the energy is located in the body and it needs to go low sometimes. Sometimes I do think you do, I mean, eating meat is just a, a, an easy cop out or having sex is an easy cop out. Um, but there are other better ways if you wanna look into how to ground yourself, ground your energy, more like red light therapy or going out and walking better foot in the grass yeah, go in nature it's, in, it's about direction nature. i think it's is about, what you're getting at and it's about not, not actually slowing it down and it's about intention as well because you know the intention of you bringing that energy down is to heal all of the lower chakras of the body so that all of your chakras are aligned all of those energetic points of the body are aligned and if you don't go down and give to those lower parts you are just gonna fuck your life up and that's why you see all, a lot of people who are on these strict diets and they don't do well um, and honestly it comes down to again intention these people they they're so angry we don't want violence on anybody we we know who the bad people of the world are like really everybody calls them reptilians or something if you're calling them reptilians i'm sorry you you, you got to do a little bit deeper digging you're looking at it from an energetic perspective yes they're reptilians because they're the they're the sons and daughters of the demiurge and the demiurge enjoys taking a a, a snake-like appearance what that generally means is that they're in the lower chakras they're in the lower energy nobody can show me evidence or proof of a, of a real reptilian reptilian because that's not what they are they're a nickname for basically sabadian frankists so with that i think we addressed a lot of the haters a lot of the people that we get their the comments from and again you know we don't do this because we're saying that we're right about everything we're doing this because we're like hey why don't you guys bring some greater wisdom to the table and the unfortunate reality well the fortunate reality i guess is that nobody has been able to do that they bring part and parcel little pieces but Honestly, the penultimate truth is the sacred secretion cycle. It's it's like the information that corresponds and coalesces with all of the different um, deeper meanings of what it means to be human and how we kind of step into ascension through go like our godly processes and archetypes and attributes. And what does it mean? It, it, it's it's all whole. You have to be holy, holy like like a whole pizza pie, like a like a whole thing. You got to be the whole thing, and that means balance. That means that you got to be – I mean even the wise sages of the, 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 the Jews, the Greeks, the Hindus, they all say you got to live from the heart. If you don't live from the heart, then you're not living in the present moment. And the heart is where Kesed is located on the Kabbalah when it goes up into the brain of uh, – through Da'a into Bina. Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, all this, all this stuff, you know. And you got to be careful um, too. That's why there's a proverb that says guard your heart because they know that that's where everything comes from. Well, because yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but truthfully, in my opinion, no matter what you really, no matter what you really think, the thing that really motivates you, that truly motivates you, anybody to action is belief and emotion. Mm -hmm. That's really it. Even I, I it's very... Uh, common nowadays for people to have this attractive attractive idea of living in the mind like Matt is talking about where you think that all of your decisions are motivated by this supreme intellect that has very carefully weighed out the options before you and that that's that's what's guiding your decisions it's it's this it's this intellect the the this high form of what it is to be an intelligent human being um, and in reality, what's really primarily motivating people to action is what they believe and what they feel, generally speaking. And mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of people are immediately not going to like that, and they're going to say, that's not true. I make decisions based on something completely different. But I would be a little cheeky, and I would point out that that interpretation is based off of you believing that that interpretation is correct, right. which is exactly what I'm doing. But my little out is that I am admitting that everything is based on belief because I think it is. And it is. That's really what I'm getting at is that you're, whether you believe what I'm saying or whether you believe that you are, you are solely motivated by your, your rational mind, it is still, whether you like it or not, no matter how you try to rationalize it, it is a belief. 
because the very concept of you having ration, the very concept of you being a rational human being and having reason and being able to use it is based off of your belief in that, mm. in that being possible, let alone in believing in that all of those words mean those things and that are accurate depictions of the things that you're actually using to right. make decisions. Right. And, and the beautiful thing about what Rich is really getting at here is that faith is the ultimate driver of our lives. We, when you wake up in the morning, you have faith that your life isn't going to go to complete shit. And that's why you get out of bed. Faith is what drives you to watch this hour and a half long video, which thank you so much for sticking with us. We, we, we got some nice little goodies here for you at the end. Um, and then, uh, but faith is really the penultimate driver of not only your godliness, but your divine success. And it's what you are all putting your fervent belief in. So we're sorry to pick on all the people who are in the comments, but guys, it's, it, we're not doing this because we're trying to preach dogma. We're doing this because we're trying to unlock the truth. And the fortunate truth is, the reality is that we've looked into pretty much all of these topics very extensively and we're just giving our two cents and if you don't like it that's fine you don't have to watch our videos but like this is going to help the vast majority of you listeners to some degree you guys are all going to learn something from this and that's that is the greatest truth of all we're just trying to help people in their mission in their lives that's all psychosmos is all about that's all we really care about that's why we teach sacred secretion because we really do feel like this is like a, tr a universal truth that everybody can get on board with and take advantage of so to finish off this very long video i want to talk about some of the people who have discussed sacred secretion in the past and ultimately why it's so important one of them is manly p hall in his book the secret teachings of all ages he talks about um kundalini the hiram uh, the lost keys and freemasonry the sacred name um he talks about opening and awakening the eye of horus or adopting the the eye the third eye of the cyclops and uh really he even he mentions the sacred secretion but he doesn't actually fully mention it he talks he calls it the spirit fire and this is one of those things that all throughout history has been very very hidden in the catholic church for example uh, and by the way, I'm reading from our book. This is on chapter 70 on the sacred secretion. This is from the first edition. So this is even like less fleshed out than our more, more up-to-date edition. We're coming out with the third edition very soon. But in the Catholic Church, the, the word is transubstantiation. This is when you have the, wa the wine and the bread. Well, the, the, the bread is the white and the wine is red. And, and this is really the allegory for the sacred secretion because it goes through a bunch of different culminating cycles. This is why it's also Santa Claus. Santa Claus, the claustrum of the brain is what causes Santa Claus to go down the chimney, leave the presents for all the kids who are good. He leave, leaves all the bad kids coal, leaves them nothing. Um, blackness, you know, he leaves them with that physical, just the physical essence. It just sits there and does nothing. Um, and then he goes back up the chimney. He wears red and white. So Santa Claus is another analogy for transubstantiation, which is the Greek word for mitosis. It's and mitosis is the first, the very first action that you take. Mitosis, when the sperm hits the egg, that's the first thing you do is mitosis. You split. You divide yourself into duality, which then implies even more duality, and you split into four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's literally a release of a burst of light at yeah. the moment of conception. Exactly. So how, how you – I mean, I understand that you, you try to come up with a scientific explanation for stuff, but how do you look at that and not see that that's God-breathing – life essence a soul into the into the human being exactly and then if you look up at the works of eugene yonash the czechoslovakian doctor he proved that women's bodies lied in tandem with the lunar cycles up to 80 percent of the time the 20 percent was when they synced up with other people so we find that that we do actually in fact bodies are made mostly of water the moon does control our cycles this is the secret keys behind uh, basically all of the deeper wisdoms this is why the women who have their most of their nerves again that neurological system is that highest system most of their neuro neurological body is in the lower half of their body that makes them more intuitive they're able to to pick up things better than men are as far as the earthly plane goes whereas men who have most of their neurological bodies in the higher uh sector section of the body often pull a lot of energy from the higher atmospheres because they're taller and from the source and so it's the combination of the motherly and and uh and fatherly aspects of energy which allow us to live you need both 
and both of them are super crucial to living and they're both super important but your the whole point of your body is to ascend and um you know dr carey dr george carey which i believe that jim carey the actor got that little spiel that he did on the norm mcdonald show i think that he did that because he found carrie's works because they shared the same the same last name although it's spelled differently i think that's how he got on that that whole uh journey because the way that he describes it is the exact same way that carrie in his book god man word made flesh um you know the spleen mysteriously creates corpuscles it does this by the enclosing of a minute body within a case thus within the spleen is formed the true physiological seed corpuscles of the body and and basically what he's saying here is that there are there are seeds within seeds within your body and you are a seed because you were a sperm that hit an egg and we are on a seed and everything is everything everything is cyclical and these seeds sprout into these beautiful plants just like how we are almost plant like in our creation because our brain is like a tree with its nervous system um but it's it goes very deep you know our book goes very very deep we say the story of christ odin krishna neja mithras attis apollonius dionysus susanu horus buddha many others are essentially all similar stories as is the story of many other warriors heroes myths and legends in modern times jesus christ has been the dominating figure of this and there's so many different applications of this wisdom um that have been passed on through different cultures um, but essentially the thing that that we must all keep in mind the the greatest truth of all is that we are connected to something that is divinely greater than us and it has a means of communicating with us that is what the sacred secretion ultimately is born of a virgin virgo christ would balance the world libra be betrayed by judas the Scor scorpion travel the world sagittarius die as a martyr capricorn be baptized by john the baptist aquarius instruct people how to fish pisces become the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world aries challenge the money changers at the temple and embrace the holy father taurus combat the opposition erroneously known as lucifer gemini mary would attempt to save him from death while embracing the holy spirit cancer and he would rise from the dead and become the mighty lion the leo and 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 this entire analogy dr george carey inez perry paracelsus asclepius Harold Percival, Kelly Marie Kerr, Santos Bonacci, Victoria Lalu, John St. Julian, so many other people have, have talked about this substance and the awakening of this substance. There's and, so much more to, to it than just what we've written on. To be clear, just one more time, don't go into these people's works and look for the term sacred secretion and then you're, cause you're not going to find it. Right. And then you're going to be like, these guys told me that they were talking about the sacred secretion. What the heck? They're talking about it just in different terms. We're all talking about the same thing. And that's what I'm saying is you got to look for the attributes of the thing that we're talking about what is the what what is this thing like and what is its purpose because those are the things <clears throat> that are universal across time and space and culture mm -hmm. it is it is that it is our link to the source yes and it's and it's divine and it's within you and nobody can take it away from you no matter what they try to put into you no matter what they try to inject you with or make you eat there's nothing that can take away from the divine spiritual essence of this practice this is why we are going to step into this new age and we are going to get rid of the bullshit we're going to get rid of the dogma we're going to get rid of all the deeply rooted information of what people have thought and what is real and again we're not saying that anybody who challenges or opposes us or brings even any of the things that we said in this video up we're not saying that you guys are wrong in any degree or any way we really want to make that known and we really hope that you people have all stuck it out to the end to listen um because what we're saying is we need to discover the the truths the real truths and if we're going to be all saying the same thing with different labels we're all going to make the same mistakes that our forefathers have made for the last thousands of years we need to consolidate our wisdom and we need to we need to if we're going to use labels and we're going to use words, then we need to at least know what we are saying exactly. And what we have put together is a way in which we can all communicate without having to stick with these like you know dogmatic principles. I keep using that word, but that's really what it seems like to me. People are saying th again, I, uh, again, not to attack vegans because I I like the concept that vegans propose, but but just to say in general that you can't eat one whole food group is is insane. I wouldn't tell people that you can't enjoy dessert even though sugar is so bad for you. Do I really think that if you eat a cupcake once a year, you're gonna go? you're gonna die and go to hell 
That's so stupid. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say this out loud. That is so fucking stupid. We had we we have people we have people who will say things like if you eat beef you will just immediately default go to hell. You are lowering your vibration so much. There's so much quantum energy that's associated with it. Yes, that is correct. Your body is taking in that energy and then you dissipate it. You get rid of it all throughout every single day. It's literally a, a, a fact that these people do not understand how energy manifests and works. I would know because I am 28 years old and this is another video that we're going to have to make soon, but we're going to talk about us. I am 28 years old. I make a six figure salary. I do this as a side job and I help people who are 70 plus with all of the things that they have accumulated in their lives and they want more answers and I help deliver some of those answers because I have had God in my life, my whole life, through all the suffering, through when I was physically and mentally abused as a child, through all the bullshit trenches that I've had to dig and go through. This is where I've come to now. I'm not even 30 years old and I'm helping probably a ton of you who are much older than me. And the, re the reality for that is not because I am special. I don't give a fuck about this lifetime because this lifetime for me is just one of many and, and probably one of more to come at some point because energy just can't be destroyed. It can only be transformed. My plan is to transform all the energies of the, worth of the world and uplift them so that we can go back to source and we can at, at the very least Go, go in the right direction in this cosmic orchestra and symphony of the sacred secretion process on a grander scale. That's my divine purpose. I just want to give to people because I, I receive so much love from the Lord. That is really like the penultimate truth. So please go in the comments, give us support or give us hatred. It doesn't matter. It feeds the beast. It literally feeds the mechanisms of this project taking off and succeeding where everybody can reach a state of their own enlightenment they can reach a state of their own perfect life and they can live the life that they want and they don't have to feel fucking guilty about doing literally anything because other people want them to force them into a pigeonhole when it doesn't make you happy and it doesn't help you i i have i came from nothing and i have built up my life to where it is today where all I'm doing is helping people financially, spiritually, it doesn't matter. I'm helping people. And that to me is is like it's so fulfilling. I am I am happy. We're happy. The people who we help and who we teach are happy. No like you can sit on your high horse all you want, but you will never be able to take away from the wisdoms that we know because they are unmovable. They are unchangeable. They are greater than us. They are truths that are so deeply situated in truth that it goes beyond what you like and don't like about us because it doesn't fucking matter. Because even if we are telling people our own truths and then those end up dis being discovered to have better sciences or better truths along the way, then that's, that's just one step in the right direction. That's what everybody else before us was doing. And that's what we're doing now. We're just carrying the torch, passing it on, spiral evolution, going down the pathway of, of ascendancy. And we are just delivering this wisdom so that other people can craft it and make it better. We're not going to be the people who have the ultimate wisdoms. We're not the end all be all. No, and nobody is and nobody, none of you listening are either. This is going to go on for fucking ever. In so the, get over it. Get over your fucking self. Get your head and your foot out of your ass. Just the, get over yourself. In the end, when we, and I don't mean we it's like cosmos, I mean royal we, everybody, when we all get back to source, and it's going to happen, when it does, it's not going to matter whether you got there by Kundalini or the way of the Tao. Or you didn't know any of this and you seed, just lived a good life. It's not going to matter. What's going to matter is that we're all going to be there. And that's what we're getting at. This name, the facet of the gem doesn't matter because we're all going to get back there. And that's why we need to stop squabbling about which facet, which name is the best one. Because there's never going to be one name that's yeah. the best one. Because what we're talking about defies these petty little cool name labels it is beyond that everything that we're teaching is beyond the draconian approach that the last two to three thousand years has set as a staple of worship so worship is really rooted in fear guilt even malignant hatred in some cases and uh that is what we are ultimately going to end so if you want to be a part of a system 
that shits all over people for being human and meanwhile it's like you're broke you're you're not eating right you're miserable you're balding whatever you 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 don't get any love because you don't love yourself if you want to live that life then so be it go to the comments drop your comments we we, we just we prefer lo- nice stuff we prefer we'll nice stuff yeah but we'll take anything because we'll what are you doing you're giving us energy you're giving us energy. You're f- you don't know what you're doing with energy. Now, if you want to come to the comments and say, hey, guys, love this video. I, I completely disagree about this and blah, blah, blah. That's fine. But make it something good. Don't make it like, oh, well, I don't. I think that you can masturbate whenever you want. Oh, orgasming. That was one thing that I forgot to talk about that we can touch on real quick. I don't believe that you should be orgasming anywhere close to as much as you probably are. I'm just going to say that direct to all of you. But... From a male and female perspective, men get more when they orgasm less. And women, I think it's a lot more complicated. Um, I don't think that a woman necessarily is as harmed as much as a man is when he orgasms and he spills his seed. However, for man, it's more of a physical essence. And for a woman, I think it's more of an energetic essence. And I think that, uh, you know, what they say, pussy power is like a real thing. I think that um, if you're the type of girl who's letting that energy out of their vagina uh, too extremely um, out of the body, then it's probably not going to manifest in the lifestyle that you want. I also think, though, that there is a way in which the energies in the lower chakras um, can be utilized really, really prominently with a female's body I uh, I, because we get a lot of comments from the women asking about orgasms and if they're good or bad Um, look I think that the fact that the nerves are in the lower part of the body for a woman mean that um, basically you have to be super careful with what you're who you're having sex with and what you're doing Um, I think that a lot of really woke spiritual women know this or they've learned this through experience but yeah, basically the, the female body can be used for healing and really should be used for healing, but it's not being used for healing today. Okay, I don't recommend that men masturbate too often. I also don't recommend that women masturbate too often either. I think that sex is supposed to be something that's harnessed through somebody else's body. However, with that being said, if you don't have a partner, then, you know, most people are going to do whatever they're going to do anyway. All that I ask is that you don't do it when it is your sacred secretion time. If you want to do it any other time, go for it. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I don't recommend doing it really at all. I think that you should have special times and moments with with a partner and that is really what you're supposed to learn is discipline until you meet somebody because the more and more that you don't do if you're let me put it to you this way you want to learn a secret about manifestation the longer that you don't masturbate the faster you will find a partner it is like I have found that in a one-to-one basis. It is so very, very true. The longer that you hold off between times in which you release and have orgasm, um, the faster that you will find a partner who will help you do that whenever you want is basically the way that it works. I'm dead serious. Like if you if you're a man, um, you're just gonna accumulate all this musk and testosterone, and you're gonna attract a woman that, uh, compared to the coomers that are sitting in their mom's basements just you know jacking off five times a day and then the same can be said for women as well i mean there's a there's an energy about women who are more disciplined in their approach um when it comes to their bodies in in a sexual sense rather than um the woman who's not and most I, and, people and I think aren't into pe- womenizers and or floozies yeah most people are not into womenizers and or floozies They're, and that's a much easier way to say it than what i said but yeah and um, if if they are not to hate on them but chances are i would be willing to bet that their standards may not be as rigidly constructed as they might think we'll just put it that right way. right if you really want my honest opinion i i mean it's your body you got to figure it out for yourself um that that's my penultimate wisdom but like if you want to know what i think works for a lot of people that i've talked to i think that having a couple days that are that are in line with a lot of your um zodiacal cycles and if you do it and you plan it for life you know with all of the things you have going on in your life you you can you know make love to your partners uh 
a couple times each month, but it's dependent on timings. And again, people who, people can get angry. They can say, "No, I've been saving my seed for six months," and I'm like, "Hey, man, if you were the if you were the type of guy who was like a chronic masturbator, saving your seed for six months is fucking amazing. That's such discipline. That's awesome." I think you're starting to hit the peak of karma where it could be having a negative blowback. Um, and it, for all the guys saying, hey, what happens if I have a wet dream? Just ignore the fact that you had a wet dream. You're, you're, you might be having too many thoughts that are programmed towards um, during your day or during your subconscious or maybe even right before you sleep. You might, have be, you might be having too many thoughts that are programming you to be sexually uh, active like late at night when you're dreaming um, and that can cause wet dreams but I'll tell you since I've been doing sacred secretion you know not that I you know I'll tell you that wet dreams basically go away the more that you focus on sacred secretion you work on it but anyway um, yeah there's a lot that goes into sex uh, as well sexual appetite you know but it, mainly a lot of it is just timings and, and disciplinary actions uh, for yourself but I mean, uh, other than that, if you really want to, if you want to do whatever, you can do whatever. Um, I'm not, we're not trying to make it a habit where we have this wisdom to the point where we have it perfected. What we're doing is we're bringing forth the wisdoms of everything that works for other people who are really spiritually gifted and they're, in, in, they're really in tapped, tapped in with this, uh, they're really spiritually gifted and tapped in with this wisdom. So that's basically what we're really trying to get at we're trying to find and unlock the higher purposes of what really is the truth what really works best for for everybody um but with that out of the way i think that this is a good point to wrap this video up i think we went on a really long tangent so thank you so much for watching um thank you to all of our supporters and our detractors yes and also our new subscribers you know we're not trying to attack anybody with this video um, we're not we're, we're just we're just trying to respond uh, as best as we can and uh, if you want more information on this I highly recommend that you get our book Psychosmos a synthesis on human history and spirituality uh, that is going to be a bulk of the information and the research that we've done on the sacred secretion and you can read about all of the things that we talked about in that book as well um, we do have a third edition uh, coming out in the third future, edition so and an abridged sure edition uh, yes we have a third edition and an abridged edition coming out so make sure you guys look out for that as well um but lots of love to you guys many blessings we hope that you guys are doing great let us know drop a comment down below what what other videos that you want to see subjects questions recommendations comments compliments if you're feeling so inclined yeah of course and if you want to critique us the totally like we we love the criticism no matter what it is we'll respond to it uh, wholeheartedly um we're really pointing out when we're when we're talking about our criticizers, we're pointing out the main the main arguments that we get. But we would prefer if you commented some uh, uh, constructive criticism and gave us a source that's important to you yes. the way we do that actually challenges or even changes our opinion on something we thought before. We would prefer that to just an empty compliment, to be honest. And we would prefer either of those to an empty attack. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and and if you want to give us empty attacks, do it because it just makes us look better. And yeah, we, get, let it out of your system, man. Yeah. Let that anger go. It's yeah, okay. let we'll, it go. We'll take it for you. I, no I love to joke back with people in the comments, so you're totally good. You again, you can think it's egotistical. I just don't care. I'm invoking jester's privilege. If you don't care what I have to say, or if you think I'm wrong, then nothing I say really matters. So I can say whatever I want, and that's what I like to do. I like to live my life by that because I think freedom of speech is super crucial and important. And with that out of the way, I think this is a great place to wrap up the video. So make sure you comment, like the video, and everything else. And go check out our book. We love you guys. Uh, we hope that you had great holidays and a great new year. Stay golden.